Hello. Uh, I would just like to share with you quickly uh, something I've been working on for a while. I've been a big fan of Mark Rebier on YouTube. I'm not sure if you've seen him, but he uses a Boss RC, I believe it's 505, to do a lot of live performance, and he's he's just fantastic. And watching him perform, I noticed that there are a lot of things he could do on the Boss RC 505 that you can't normally do easily in Ableton. Um, and I've been, I've been playing around to try and achieve a lot of that functionality within Ableton because I love playing within this software. Um, and there's a lot of uh, pros and cons to each different format, but I think I've found a way to combine the best of both worlds in Ableton. So let me show you uh, how I've done it. So as you can see here, this is my default setup I use when playing around and looping. I have some different instruments set up with some racks um, down here, etc. But we don't really need to focus on those for now. Um, the main thing is actually setting up this send channel over here with multiple looper devices. So you may or may not be familiar with these uh, Ableton looper devices, which basically mirror the functionality of um, the Boss series loopers. Um, and you can MIDI map these different functions to different hardware you might have. I have a Launchpad Pro Mark III, which I use the custom modes to map all these buttons to and stuff. So what I originally intended to do was I just wanted to have one return channel and I wanted to put a uh, like four or five loopers on that one channel. Um, and it didn't work as I thought. Well, let me show you what I mean. So originally I wanted to create a return track, right? Here it would be. And then I would go over to my looper, you know, drag four or five of these down, let's say three, right? And I just figured if I was to send the audio, what's this channel D? So for example, here's my vocals. If I wanted to send uh, my audio over there into channel D like that, then I could set up individual loops that way. The problem with this setup is that the way Ableton devices work is they work from left to right. So unless you have, um, yeah, unless you have audio from this looper, when you go to record in this looper, it won't actually record the audio from your vocal track. It will record the audio from the looper on the left. So this doesn't work at all. So I'm just going to delete this. Um, what does work though, is if you set up a, uh, a rack of effects, with multiple loopers in it, which is what I've done here. Now to create this, all you need to do is just drag a looper onto a track. So let's just create uh, an example of how I did this from scratch. Um, drag a loop down, right click up here and group that bad boy. And let's pop the rack open as we can see here. And so now you could simply go down one by one and create these. I don't know if it's in parallel or whatever you want to call it. If you do it like this, all of these different loopers, they will receive the audio from the send. So this is channel D. So here we go. Right now on my vocals, it's receiving no volume. But if I was to turn this up, which I don't want to do because I'll double the audio up, um, this would then be able to uh, send audio to all of these four, all four of these loopers simultaneously, which is what you want to do. Now I'm just going to delete this again and go back to my one I've got set up. I've renamed these looper one, two, three, and four. Uh, I put some extra effects on afterwards, but let's not worry about that for now. All you need to worry about is this. Um, now you might wonder like, why would you bother doing this instead of just using the default uh, loops in Ableton in the, in the clip view? And there are several advantages to having both of these uh, setups accessible at your fingertips. The biggest one I find is that Using these loopers is the only way to start a loop in Ableton uh, that controls the master tempo. So if you try to set up a loop, say like in this vocal track, for example, and you have nothing else and you try to turn the loop on and off, it's going to try and sync to whatever the master tempo is up here. Um, but if you actually use the looper devices, it will automatically change the tempo to follow whatever the loop length is that you've set here. So for example, right, let's do like a, I'll do just like a count or something. So as you can see right now, nothing's playing. So let's just try like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So as you can see up here, the, the tempo has changed to 131 to match the length of my loop. So if you want to start with, say, uh, some beatboxing or something like that, some good old fucking, uh, good old fucking, uh, 
This is very important. Always must be stopped to achieve this effect. As you can see, the tempo up here is now synced to whatever is in here. Um, like I said, this will only work if the if the track is not playing. So make sure the track is stopped if you want to achieve this. Um, once you have these in parallel, you're basically ready to go um, because you can just MIDI map each of these individual functions um, to whatever hardware you want to do or use macros or whatever. And basically you are set up ready to rock and rock and roll. Uh, another really nice thing about this is that you can choose by using the send for your respective channel. For example, this is channel B, my uh, send track here, right? Oh, sorry, my return track. Um, right now, only by defo uh, default have the vocals going into this track. So if I hit that record button, even if I'm playing on my MIDI keyboard or my live electric guitar, um, it will only record the vocals because only the vocals are being sent to this return track, but you can change that. So if you want to record both your vocals and your guitar at the same time, or well then you just need to turn up the B send on your guitar, or maybe you want to do the vocals in the bass, or maybe you record a vocal loop and then you think, oh, I'd like to add a little bit of percussion. So I'll just turn that up quickly and then add that loop in it as well. You have full control over all of that, which is just great. Um, doing this as well, which is really nice is that you can use both the clip functionality of your MIDI instruments as well as the looper functionality of the looper device for your live instruments, which um, is really important because you can't actually stack up the audio effects using uh, live instrumentation in Ableton, which is quite annoying, but you can if you use the looper device. So for example, um, if I was to record, oh, sorry, just give me a second. If I was to record this one, so uh, what's this going to do, right? Let's just turn the metronome on and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay. So if I want to stack audio on top of this clip, I actually cannot do that uh, as far as I know in the clip view of Ableton. So I would have to set up a second parallel clip here if I wanted to have both of these play in, uh, in in synchronicity, which you can do, it's fine. But sometimes you just want to have, you know, three simple things onto one clip um, because you don't want to be messing around with too many uh, different clip buttons at the same time. So if I was to do that, I could just go over here, um, pop open my loopers, right? And I could do, let's just do the same thing. So for example, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, seven, eight, four, one, two, seven, eight, four. Oh my God, that sounded awful. But you can see exactly what I'm talking about. You can have both of those things. Now, this is not perfect. And I really hope one day Ableton makes this more, uh, I guess, this transport more functional. I can now take these two stack clips and put them over here in these blank loop channels that I have set up. And now I have access. Anytime I want to play that, um, I can just play them here. Now, one thing you do have to remember is that the looper is going to play. So if I don't clear this and I hit play, I would hear two instances of this playing, which is annoying, but it's the best I can figure out how to do so far. One, two, two seven, three. Eight. Oh my God, that's terrible. But it works. It works. So that's the main thing. Um, yeah, that's the that's the main thing of the setup is having these four loopers in parallel uh, like this which it just, it's great because it gives you the functionality, not quite the same of say like a boss uh, dedicated hardware device, but pretty, pretty damn close actually, pretty functionally close. And you still get all the benefits of having your clip view um, within Ableton traditionally. So yeah, the final piece of the puzzle for me was just having these two spare loop channels um, for a bit of utility. The benefit of that is if I have something in one of my loopers I want to drag out, I can just freely drag it over to either of these clips. But the other thing that I do with these uh, is that I have them by default. They're listening to the audio from um, an additional uh, channel that I have set up for my live instrumentation. So let's just close my B channel down, open up the C. All that's happening here is I have an extra return track um, for my live instruments. So it's channel C. I literally have my vocals and guitar running both into channel C 
And then I have these two tracks listening to that channel C, as you can see here, um, which means that, and they're both set to off. Sorry, that's very important. You don't want to hear the uh, monitoring from these ever. So if I want to use the clip functionality loop to lay down a vocal loop or a guitar loop, I can use the clips. However, if I want to use the uh, looper device functionality, or well, then I've got that on channel B and I have both options available to me. Um, the other thing I can quickly do if I want to, let's say I record a loop into here. Let's, oh my God, let's do this again. It's going to sound, sound tragic, but I don't even care at this point. Everything stops. So let's just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Brilliant. I, let's say I have a loop in here. And if I don't want to drag it, the other thing I can do is I can quickly set this to listen to my B channel and I can hit this record here. Okay, uh, and then I can actually, or if this is playing, say it was already playing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 Okay, awful. But that audio is now stored in this clip. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One. There we go. It was on a delay because it was playing for much longer than what I had showing there. Um, but as you can see, it, it totally works. So if you're like me and you've been looking for this extra loop functionality, in Ableton. Uh, this is how I figured out how to make it work for me. I'm sure there's an even better way to set this up, but so far I've been playing around uh, a lot with this and having tons of fun. Like I really feel like this was the final piece of the Ableton puzzle for a live performer uh, such as myself. And I really encourage you to give it a go and yeah, let me know how you find it. Okay. Thank you.